Good morning everybody, this is Lara with your Monday to Friday update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. Before I get into it, if you're not subscribed here, I recommend doing so, so you don't lose my channel and you don't miss these Monday to Friday updates. You should be subscribed because I've been doing this for 15 years, 10 of which as a CMT, so you're getting my experience and qualifications here on these three markets for free, so it's a pretty good deal I think. I've been expecting Bitcoin to go up. We had a bullish signal from on balance volume on this session right here that told us an upward breakout was more likely and that's exactly what we're getting. What was resistance at 41,100 was confidently broken yesterday with a close above, prices continuing to move up. I'll look for next resistance about 48,000. Let's see how extreme these conditions are getting. Volume is again pushing price higher. Overall so far some decline in volume that could change though. This is early in the next bullish run after that little sideways consolidation. Here's that signal from on balance volume. It gave us another bullish signal when it tested support. It's moving up and away. We'll wait again for the next range to develop for on balance volume and provide us with the next signal. The upward trend is now extreme but not, well it is technically very extreme but not nearly as extreme as it can get for this market. Extreme is above 45 and extreme is above both DX lines. When both of those conditions are met, technically the trend is very extreme. But this market can have a much more extreme trend than that. ADX can reach close to 100, it can get above 80 or 90 before this trend could be as extreme as it may get toward the end. And this is just the daily time frame. RSI is again overbought but not nearly as extreme as it can get for this market and it will typically reach overbought relatively early on in a bullish run. So for Bitcoin just because RSI is again overbought does not mean that this upward movement has to end. This is absolutely normal to be expected behaviour relatively early on in a bullish run. And money flow is still neutral. Today I want to step back a little and have a look at the weekly Elliott Wave counts for Ethereum and XRP. Here's the weekly chart for Ethereum. This is all within a cycle degree third wave which is unfolding as an impulse and that will be labelled primary 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So primary 3 which began back down here in June 2022. Primary 3 must meet all Elliott Wave rules for that simple structure. It must move beyond the end of primary 1. It may only subdivide as an impulse and that will be labelled intermediate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this wave count is extremely bullish. It sees a third wave at minute, minor, intermediate, primary and cycle degree. 5 degrees, 3 of them very large degrees. This wave count expects a strong increase in upward movement, a strong support from an increase in momentum, push from volume, an increase in range, a huge increase in volatility is expected. It's very common for cryptocurrencies to exhibit fifth waves that in third waves one degree higher extreme volatility. I am expecting particularly intermediate five to end primary three to end with vertical upward movement from anywhere from two to five weeks of absolutely extreme volatility. We'll probably also see that for minor five to end intermediate three. We might also see it to end minor three. We might see it also to end minute wave three, but definitely these higher degrees I'm expecting extreme volatility. This is a base channel drawn around intermediate waves one and two. One of the ways you can use a base channel is the third wave should have the power to break through resistance at the upper edge of a base channel in a bull market. And the lower edge of the base channel should provide support for lower degree second wave corrections along the way up. So if we do see a deeper pullback, this is where I would expect it to find support. When price reaches the upper edge of the base channel, I'd expect a little pullback before a breakthrough, a back test of support and then moving up and away. So I'm going to be using this trend line as well in coming weeks to guide as to what we expect price to do for the short term. Within minor wave 3, no second wave correction may move beyond its start below 1521.78. I am not expecting new lows below that point for Ethereum possibly for years yet. At the daily time frame here's the end of minor 2 and the start of 3 we have minute 1, minute 2 a double combination zigzag x running contracting triangle, minute 3 has now moved beyond the end of 1 so I'm pulling the invalidation point up here to the start of minute 3. Within minute 3 its second wave correction may not move beyond its start below 2019.91. 
This is a best fit channel I've drawn around upward movement. This may provide support for pullbacks along the way up. The upper edge may provide resistance, although increased volatility may have the power to break through that upper edge. The daily time frame, we saw an ascending triangle for Ethereum. I calculated the target at 2356.44. That wasn't quite met yesterday. The high for yesterday, 2273.89, so this target is still in play. It may not be high enough though, it's possibly too uh, conservative. I'll look for next resistance about 2400 and support about 2100. Yesterday's session saw a strong upward date with an increase in volume, bit of an increase in range as well. That's good to see some volatility and volume returning to the market. On balance volume gave us this bullish signal a few days ago. No new range, no new signal. ADX is again increasing, telling us there's an upward trend. It's not above both DX lines today and it's below 45. So this is an extremely bullish look for ADX. This is an upward trend in a relatively early stage, particularly for a cryptocurrency. Early on in the bullish run, ADX will reach very extreme. It'll stay there for a long while. This is an early stage in the upward trend. RSI is only just again overbought. There's such a long way to go before this is as extreme as it can get. And money flow also still well in neutral territory. The weekly Elliott wave count for XRP also. The bigger picture sees a cycle degree third wave underway, subdividing as an impulse. That will be labelled primary one, two, three, four, five. Primary three beginning back down here may only subdivide as an impulse. That will be labelled intermediate one, two, three, four, five, intermediate one, a leading expanding diagonal, intermediate two, a quick sharp little zigzag, not as deep as I had expected but still corrected and now I expect intermediate three has begun and may only subdivide as an impulse. When intermediate three moves beyond the end of one then I will pull the invalidation point up to the start of intermediate three but for now I leave it down here to acknowledge that intermediate two could be continuing further. We could label this A, B, C, it could continue lower, and if it does, it may not move beyond the start of 1, below 0.2794. My invalidation points are an illustration of risk. Now, I'm not charting uh, alternate Elliott wave counts. I can see it myself. I don't need to chart it for my own needs, and this analysis is pretty much what I'm doing for my own investing purposes. So I can see on this chart a, B, C, continuing for intermediate two. So I'm leaving the invalidation point down here to acknowledge that alternate labelling. That would be my alternate for XRP. Let's take a look at the daily chart. The low of intermediate two is this point down here. Intermediate three may only subdivide as an impulse. Within that, minor one may be complete here. Minor two and expanded flat. Minor three beginning down here with minute one expanded flat for two. Now expecting higher movement for minute wave three. When minor wave 3 has moved beyond the end of 1, I'll pull the invalidation point up to here, but for now I leave it down here. Within minor 3, minute 2 may be over, so minute 3, within minor 3, within intermediate 3, within primary 3, within cycle 3. A third wave, again, at 5 degrees for both of them, is expected to be in its very, very early days. Cryptocurrencies, when they have big third waves, they do tend to start out a little bit slowly with weak volume and weak range. They accelerate through the middle as volume picks up and range and volatility increase, and then they absolutely explode at the end, giving a curved look. Parabolic growth is very common and almost always happens for a third wave. And a third wave within a third wave, it always looks like that so far in the price history. So that's what I'm expecting going forward parabolic growth so we're just in the early early stages. At the daily time frame for XRP it's still having trouble breaking above resistance at 62 cents. If we see a pullback now look for the 50 day moving average in the first instance. If it breaks below that look for support at 54, 55 cents. It might not get down that low but let's see if it can break above resistance at 62 cents. That is quite a sticking point if it can do that look out for a quick back test of support before moving up and away but for now let's expect resistance at 62 cents to hold until it gives way. So yesterday's green candlestick had an increase in volume for upward movement within the session. Let's see how today follows through. On balance volume has given us a bullish signal. This tells us that it's more likely than not we're going to see an upward breakout above 62 cents. But as I said yesterday, I have some concern about this signal from on balance volume. This trend line 
that's been broken and has quite a strong slope and it's only got two or three tests so it doesn't have strong technical significance so this signal is weak for XRP ADX is still declining this is actually really good to see it's getting down to a relatively low level and it might get down to below both DX lines. If it does that, it's going to be setting itself up for a really strong signal. That is so good to see. With no clear trend reverting to a model of stochastics plus support and resistance, we would expect stochastics to continue higher to overbought and price to continue higher to resistance. When they reach those points simultaneously, then an upward swing may be over and we'd expect a turn and a change to a downward swing unless ADX at that stage indicates a new trend. That's it from me today with your quick update. I Sometimes there's not a lot new to tell you about the markets but I'm going to keep giving you this daily update because I want you to know that I'm going to reliably be here every day and giving you basic facts, basic data, basic technical analysis in a nice, calm, reliable way just to try and tone down the emotion that is inherent in looking at these markets, these extremely volatile markets. I want you to rely on me to just calm everything down. So that's one of the reasons why I know it's a bit repetitive, but I'm going to keep doing it. So stay calm, folks, and have a fabulous day.